So quickly here today, I want to talk to you about weight distributing hitches. Tell you what we've got and how it works for us. And then I'm going to show you how we transfer it over from our old truck to our new truck. Okay, so friends, I would like to urge you to watch this video in its entirety, and that's not just to improve my analytics on YouTube, but it's because I made some mistakes when I set this up the first time, and I don't want you to make the same mistakes. Uh, but I want to show you the footage of all this so that I can guide you through the process that I used to make sure that this is dialed in correctly. And um, you know, again, I don't want you making my mistakes, so uh, let's get started here. We have an E2 round bar hitch. It has friction sway control with these L brackets right here. And um, you know, I believe it's an 8,000 pound hitch, but these are 800 pound bars, which is plenty for our trailer because the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer is only 7,500 pounds. If you have your hitch set up properly, you shouldn't experience sway. And that's very important, guys. Um, I can, I constantly see people on the internet recommending bigger trucks and $3,000 weight distribution hitches when all a person needs to do in most cases is get the hitch that they have set up right and of course having this set up properly that's assuming that you're within the specs of your truck right but I believe that you can max out your truck as far as cargo carrying capacity if you have your hitch set up right because you're gonna balance everything right on your trailer or on your truck if you don't have your hitch set up right and you're maxing out your truck, then there's a good chance that you're going to be overweight on one of the axles on the truck, and that's when you're going to run into problems. But I can tell you that if your hitch is set up poorly, which we're going to talk about because of the mistakes that I made, a bigger truck does not compensate for poor hitch setup. And I know this now for a fact because I set it up wrong and we had a little bit of squirreliness with the trailer going down to Chigatee. A bigger truck does not compensate for a poorly set up hitch. So, and that's the same thing, right? If you buy a $3,000 hitch and you set it up poorly, you're still gonna have problems. So, There's a lot of different styles and price ranges of hitches. Um, the two of them though that we're gonna discuss here, because the, most of what I'm gonna say is applicable to both, um, are these with your L brackets here that provide friction sway control and then you also have ones that are basically the same hitch head setup but there's a chain here and those have no kind of sway control built into the hitch but you can get a sway bar that you would mount onto here and it attaches to your trailer. So these hitches when you're troubleshooting them the biggest thing and the most important thing is that these bars right here be parallel to this frame right here. That's important. You don't adjust these brackets, or if you have chains, you don't adjust the links in the chains to change your weight distribution. You adjust your weight distribution with the tilt of this head. When this tilts back, it puts pressure on these bars, which distributes more weight to the front of the truck. When you're setting this up, the thing you're concerned with is the front axle of the truck, the measurements of the front axle of the truck. How much sag there is in the rear means essentially nothing. You want to return weight to the front. That's your goal because that gives you your steering and braking capabilities, brings them back to how the truck would be unloaded essentially is the goal. So if you take too much weight off of the front then you can't steer your truck and most of the truck's braking is with the front so you lose that if you're taking weight off of the front. Um, so when we set this up and we go through the numbers with you, that's the main thing that I'm going to be concerned with. And we'll show you that. The other thing that's very important is the owner's manual of your truck and the owner's manual of your hitch tells you how to set all this stuff up. So please read both of those because each brand of truck has different requirements and of course each hitch has their own little intricacies. A couple things 
that I feel like are important is don't be afraid to tweak your hitch. If you're having trouble with sway or you're having trouble in general with your towing experience, try adjusting your hitch because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results, well you're not going to get different results. So make adjustments. Um, with ours, with our half ton, you know, we added an, we added a washer from how the dealership had it set up and that changed the towing experience drastically. A bigger truck does not compensate for a poorly set up hitch. Now that the hitch is dialed in, towing is perfect going down the road. We had no sway, we had no porpoising, no bounce, no anything. Um, and so it makes a big difference how you have your hitch set up. Yeah. So guys, the big purpose of this right now is to identify how much taller the new truck is compared to the old truck. So this receiver, from the only level spot we have, which is why the lighting is so bad and it's so dark in here, is uh, it's 18 inches off of... So friends, in that scene you just saw, the old truck the hitch receiver was 18 inches off the ground. The new truck, the hitch receiver, is 22 inches off the ground. So we knew we needed 4 inches more drop, roughly, because each truck is going to sag differently. The 3 quarter ton is going to sag less. That basically told us what hitch shank we needed to buy. So if we, the one we had was 5 inches of drop, you know, I wanted to make sure that we had enough in the new shank to get the trailer to be level or nose down because you definitely don't want the trailer to be nose high. Another measurement I'm going to take is the height of the front of the trailer tongue when we're going down the road with the old truck. So at the bottom there is 19 inches. I think that's what we want to achieve when we set up the new hitch. So friends, in the last scene there, that measurement is the trailer hitch tongue as it was going down the road hitched up to the old truck with the sway bars attached and uh, we knew if we didn't move the trailer and when we brought the new truck in if we just achieved that same 19 inches the way the trailer sits going down the road wouldn't have changed and so we knew we wanted to get 19 inches or maybe a little bit lower but certainly not higher because being nose high is bad. So that's the whole goal of this setup because we don't have level ground to take new any kind of new measurements. So we're trying to do the best we can with what we've got. So friends, we used we used those measurements that we took to assure that we would buy a hitch with enough drop. We bought an eight inch drop hitch and it has a two and a half inch shank. Since we were buying a new hitch shank anyway, because we didn't have enough drop on the original one, I wanted to make sure I got one that fit the receiver with the, out the adapter. Um, because we wanted to make sure there wasn't a whole lot of slop. I mean, this isn't too, too bad. Of course, it's not pinned in there. But uh, I just think it's generally better. Plus, if you're buying something and it doesn't cost any extra to get the right thing, I think it's a good idea to get the right thing. This is a Kurt hitch. Got off of Amazon. It's rated for 15,000 pounds and 1,500 pounds of tongue weight. And uh, that should be plenty for any trailer that we ever intend to haul, haul with this truck. Uh, one thing I do want to note, friends, is uh, that I sometimes hear people on the internet say that raising and lowering this hitch head on the shank somehow affects the way your weight is distributed. I can't see how that's possible. So those people that I'm referring to are actually correct. Um, and I'll show you where it says in my hitches owner's manual that raising and lowering the hitch actually does change how the weight is distributed. But I was trying to see if we needed to add or subtract washers. So I hitched up the trailer with it on the old shank with the six washers the way it was in basically in or just in order to take measurements and give myself kind of a baseline. So what we're going to do here without lowering this at all we're going to hook it up to the trailer with and without the bars. We're going to take measurements off of the truck. We know this needs to be at 19 inches off the ground sitting in this exact same spot. This is exactly where we unhitched it. 
So we want to achieve that or a little bit less because you want your trailer nose down. If it can't be level, it needs to be nose down. And uh, so we're going to take those measurements and we're going to take measurements off the fenders of the truck to see how our weight is distributed. And so that way we'll know if we need to add or remove washers. I'm guessing we're going to want to remove one washer. Uh, we have six in here currently. And my estimation, because this is a three quarter ton and Ram wants a little more weight on the rear, we're going to want five washers instead of six. So with my GMC half ton, in the owner's manual, it stated that they wanted you to return greater than half of the height to the front axle that you lost and, uh, and get it as close to where it originally was as possible. Whereas RAM in the owner's manual wants you to get it to halfway back and no further. So that was my thought process behind going from six washers to five is that I figured we needed to distribute a little bit less weight forward on this truck. And uh, that's because on GM trucks, or at least the half ton that I had, is both axles were rated for 3,900 pounds. The same rating for both axles. This Ram 3 quarter ton, the rear axle, is rated for significantly more than the front axle. So they want a little bit more weight on the back of the truck. And that's also why you inflate your tires on the rear of this truck to 65 PSI and the fronts to only 60. It's because the axles are rated for different capacities. So here we are, we're hitching it up, and uh, friends, when you're doing this kind of thing, you really want to try to find the most level spot that you can. And uh, when we get to Shawnee tomorrow, I'm actually going to take some measurements with it all set up on perfectly level ground. But here at the homestead, there's really no such thing as level ground. So this is with all the weight on there, we're going to take measurements of all four fenders, rate that stuff down, and uh, see what it does. It doesn't seem to have sagged the truck at all, so I have a feeling we're going to have to go down quite a bit. Okay, so friends, we're at 21 and 3 quarters, roughly, and that's without the weight distribution bars. Now remember, we were at 19 inches with the weight distribution bars. It made the trailer pretty much level, if not slightly nose down. So let's see what the bars do, and we'll also take the fender measurements and see what all happens here. So, the rear right now looks to be at 42 and a half, and that's with all the weight on, 42 and a half. The front, as you can see, is 41 and a quarter. All right, so as you know, our goal with the bars on is to be at 19 inches, and we're at 23. That's with the bars on. Now, with, um, as you can see here, whoops. As you can see here, the front moved up about a quarter inch on each side with no bars. On each side, we probably want to get it to go back down an eighth. And uh, the back end, about an inch of sag on both sides. So we're going to take the measurements with the bars on and see what they are and see if what we need to play with. So if you look at these measurements, they really don't mean a whole lot because the ground was so uneven. And uh, if you look at the driver's side, it did what it was supposed to. But on the passenger side, it didn't move it at all. And so, you know, when you're doing this, you, you really want to be on some kind of level paved surface so you can get accurate measurements. And uh, after I make the final adjustments to the hitch to get it dialed in the right way, you know, we took the measurements again on a much better surface and it actually works out so the goal though here was just to kind of get things close and then you can always tweak it and like I said earlier in the video don't be afraid to adjust your hitch if you're having problems switch something up 
and you know obviously make an educated guess as to what your problem is don't just go willy-nilly making adjustments so friends let's talk about the mistake I made and how I realized that I made a mistake and how we fixed it when I was editing the video for Shawnee State Park which you've seen and if you haven't seen it the links right there when I was editing that footage I noticed that the hitch bars was not parallel they were going down this direction and so you know I thought that it might have just been the camera playing tricks on me which is why it wasn't in a hurry to do anything about it so when we when we moved the hitch over I assumed and I'm still not exactly sure of the geometry behind it but I assumed when you move this up and down that you shouldn't have to tweak these because I'm not exactly sure how that could have possibly changed where these needed to be so I was very wrong in that and like I said I still don't understand the geometry behind how you're moving this up and down on a straight axis the trailer is moving with it so this whole unit should be stationary and these shouldn't have to change but you should always double check that kind of stuff because apparently it is possible um, I'm gonna look into that a little bit you know I don't know if it's like the distance from these holes to over here or the way that it's tilted or if the trailer is a little more nose down maybe than it was before but I still don't understand how this whole unit moving up and down from truck to truck would change where these were and it seemed to do okay going to Shawnee and I didn't notice it at Shawnee um, like I said I noticed it in the video footage so then whenever we were leaving to Chickatig I looked at it and I realized that it was wrong and I thought we'd be okay going down there and, and it wasn't too awful um, it just like I said it was a little squirrely going down the road and you know the reason for that is when these bars aren't parallel and they're not laying flat on this you're not getting your sway control because only just a little bit of the bar was touching the L bracket and that's how you get your sway control is this is flat against this and there's friction from the weight being distributed and that prevents your sway um, and like I said it, it wasn't too terrible um, obviously we made it there safely and we made it across the bridge safely the reason I didn't adjust it before going down there when I first seen it was because I had thought that if I had moved these up that I was gonna have to tear apart the shank again to maybe get rid of a washer because the measurements that I took on the truck were all correct and so I wanted to maintain that and I thought that was more important for travel than um, having the sway control completely right and I still stand by that you want your weight distributed correctly and that's the most important thing so then when I changed it when we were down there and we hitched back up I retook the measurements on the truck to make sure that we were still going to be balanced correctly um, and we haven't scaled this yet with this truck um, and we might do that at some point in time now that I think I've got everything right I'd like to see where we're at um, with the numbers but it feels good going down the road and that's very that's the very important thing right because you want it to feel good going down the road and you don't want sway and all that stuff and uh, another thing for ram owners is you very well might be able to get away with not buying a new shank that on the very bottom holes of the shank that I had we probably would have been okay whenever I made the decision to buy a new shank I had thought we were going to be one set of holes lower and when I originally tried setting it up I did it that way and it was nose down too much so where it's at now as far as the trailer is concerned is absolutely level but when I talk about don't be afraid to tweak your adjustments on your hitch most people get real scared of these bolts and I think that's why they're afraid to make some of the adjustments but I did confirm with the Reese hitch manual to achieve 300 pound-feet of torque you torque these with a torque wrench that almost everybody has if you go to 150 pound-feet of torque and then go one quarter turn more that should give you the proper torque spec and then what I did and hopefully you can see it but I drew a line on the nut and the bolt and uh, I know if that line lines up that I'm still at the proper torque 
And so you want to be checking that every single time you hitch up or stop. You want to look at that line and make sure that it's correct. Okay friends, real quick before the wind picks up again, I want to thank you for watching this video. Um, it's very important that you read the owner's manual for your truck and your trailer. Please don't just go by what I said. I think these few little tips will help you to have a better towing experience and that's what we all really want is a good towing experience. So no matter which truck you have, no matter which bumper pull trailer that you have, your weight distributing hitch is your best weapon in towing to get a good towing experience. And so I don't think you have to spend a lot of money to accomplish this. And so that's why I wanted to do this video was to show you proper hitch setup is the most important thing. Uh, I can't stress it enough. If you're interested, we're going to probably do the video on the jack next, how we turned it sideways so we can open the tailgate. Uh, I think that's a huge improvement uh, to the towing experience as well. What we did was very unique, um, and some said it was impossible actually, um, but I'm here to tell you it's not. It's very possible. It just takes a little bit of patience and persistence. But uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.